Hi and welcome back to a new video again today RTX 5080 yesterday we featured the founders edition today it's time for custom cards today in detail the 5080 Astral by Asus and if you're asking yourself why we didn't really see a lot of custom content around 5090 cards it is mainly because the availability also for the reviewers is currently still difficult I will keep you updated if I have a 5090 custom design card then we will definitely also feature it on this channel because I saw some comments but it's not I don't want to do it it's simply because I didn't have a custom design card yet but today first 5080 Astral Thermal Greasy Duronaut is our new high-end thermal paste and the successor of Cryonaut. It's even better performing, it is much easier to apply, it is cheaper and it's much more durable. That's where the name comes from. Especially if you're now maybe considering to buy a new PC, then I would highly recommend that you're looking into this thermal paste. So let's continue with this video. I'm pretty sure most of you are aware of Asus replacing the name of Strix for the high-end cards with Astral. And I'm pretty sure you also all know the astronomical high prices memes which I find kind of funny and also talking about prices I don't really talk about the prices too much in my videos simply because at this point we don't know what kind of prices we will really see in reality once these cards launch and once the av availability might be pretty bad. In general the 5080 Astral is more than twice as big in terms of volume versus the Founders Edition. If we just place them next to each other you can already see that the Astral is quite a bit longer and it's not only that but it's also the height. This is as you know dual slot design and this is almost 4 slot, it's in theory 3.8 slot, we can just treat it as a 4 slot design. It is also almost 3 kilograms in weight and all that together, the size, massive heatsink should in theory allow this card to be more silent than the Founders Edition, at least I hope so. Before we use it, I want to talk about the design first. It's kind of the 4090 Strix and the 4090 Matrix having a baby that is air-cooled, at least design-wise. And I think the design is pretty awesome. I personally like it a lot. I like how it looks like. Also, this is everything is a metal frame, except for the centerpiece that is more grayish. This is plastic. But honestly, it's so well made that it's first look, it is really hard to tell which pieces are metal and which are plastic. You might mistake the plastic for metal, so the surface finish and everything is really nice. So they definitely did a very good job in this regard from my perspective. It is also a four fan design, so we have three big fans in the front and one on the back. If we take a look from the side on the card, it is quite interesting looking at the fins of the air cooler. On the left side, on this portion right here, until here, you can see that they have a fairly large spacing in between, which I think is to allow to push air through, even though it is quite high at a low fan speed. And then on this portion right here, the fins are sitting a little bit denser together. In this portion, roughly 1.4 millimeter distance between the fins, and here about 1.8 millimeter distance between the fins. And I think that's just because this portion has the additional fan from the backside to pull more air through. Then there is also a BIOS switch right here, where you can switch between the P and the Q BIOS, so performance and quiet. This will absolutely be relevant in this test and in this video and in general for the Astral it seems, because I already read a test online about from computer base where, yeah, it didn't look great in a performance profile in terms of noise level, but we will get back to that in a second. Then we have the possibility to attach two fans to this card right here. If you take off this cover, you could hook up fans if you want to. Not sure why, but the possibility is there. Then the 12 volt high power. And if we flip it around, again, aluminum backplate to dissipate additional heat and the fourth fan sitting on the right. And I can tell you, this fan definitely will be problematic for the Astral. I think it looks quite cool how this LED bar just loads up when you're firing on the card. And by the way, also the wire view in the reverse version works for the 5080 and 5090 Astral cards. That is the same for both the Pro version and the normal version. This is also quite useful if you, for example, want to check the Windows idle power draw, which I didn't feature or mention yet in any of the videos. And it's also, again, with the RTX 50 cards that they're pulling 
almost everything across the 12 volt high power connector and almost nothing from the PCIe slot. And there you can see it's only 11 to 13 watts in idle. We will now test 3 d Mark Speedway in the P mode. That is the stock condition when you buy the card, you get it shipped home. It will be in the P mode. And I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's surprisingly loud. It's much louder than I expected. And I'm not sure if the microphone will pick it up, but I hope you can hear it a little bit. The problem with the noise level seems to be mainly related to the fourth fan that is sitting on the backside, because if I stop this fan, there is a huge difference. And generally in the P mode, the fan curve seems to be pretty aggressive. In the P mode, the GPU is constantly clocking above 2900 MHz, which is pretty impressive if we compare it to the Founders Edition. While the GPU stays a lot colder, just above 60 degrees Celsius, fans are spitting at roughly 1600 RPM, and the board power draw is about 380 watts. Now we're switching into Q mode. In Q mode, there is a big difference. The fans are not ramping up as quickly, and they're generally spinning at a lower RPM, but you can still hear the fan on the backside a little bit, or let's say more than a little bit. The performance in Q mode is a little bit lower. It's only a small difference. The GPU is clocking about 50 megahertz less, but also the temperature target is increased. We're reaching about 70 degrees Celsius on the load. The fans are spinning slower and the power draw is now only about 360 watts. I also asked ASUS about the settings of the P and the Q profile. It's not only the fan speed that is different and the temperature target, but also the power target setting itself. In the P mode, the power target is set to default 100% to 400 watts and you can't increase it further, for example, in GPU tweak. If you run it in Q mode, the default setting is 300 and 60 watts and you can increase it further if you want to but it's also running at a lower fan speed and then i just repeated another five runs of speedway to get accurate data also without for example having gpuc open in the background i then took the average out of those five runs that you can see right here so that's a comparison of founders edition q mode and also p mode in the q mode the 5080 astral is about three percent faster than the founders edition while pulling seven percent more current in performance mode as you could see the gpu clocks about 50 megahertz higher which leads to additional performance we can see six percent performance increase over the founders edition while the astral pulls about 10 percent more power from my perspective or from my liking even in q mode I'm still not a big fan of the noise level. The fan in the back is still a little bit annoying, but we can fix that going into GPU tweak where we can also find other useful information. Very similar to what you might know from the 4090 matrix, there are additional functions for monitoring temperatures on your card. So the center is the GPU without hotspot, thanks Nvidia, and on the side we can monitor the memory temperature, which can also be quite useful, especially once you're looking for like thermal pad or like putty applications, stuff like that. But what I'm personally the biggest fan of is this part on the right, 12 volt high power monitoring. If you hover across the pins on the bottom, you go to the per pin sensing. And this allows to see the current that flows across each of the pins of the 12 volt high power and thus allows to detect failures quite early because you can see if one pin wouldn't pull any current or if one pin would pull exceptionally high current, you could see this right here. So that is an extremely useful feature. We will now try to manually tweak the fans in GPU tweak. And for that, we have two fan settings that we can adjust. Fan one is the fan on the left and the fan on the right. And then fan two is the one in the center and on the back. And after a bit of testing, what worked quite well for me is adjusting GPU fan speed two. Click here to open the fan curve and then just drag this all the way down. This is for the center and the rear fan and just save this. There is a small problem with this setting though. I'm not quite sure why, at least the fan stop is no longer working. It's not really a problem though, because the center and the rear fan, they're now always spinning at the minimum fan speed, which is 500 RPM. And it's so slow that you can't hear it. The positive aspect is that the idle temperature of the car is much lower. So there is that. And I can tell you the load noise level is just so much better. The card has now been running quite a while again under load and it's a lot more quiet. It's the same thing as before, but it's a lot more quiet. It's so quiet that I can now hear the coil whine, which I could hardly hear before. That is hard to yeah, compare. It seems to be a bit more as on the 5080 Founders Edition. Then again, the 5080 Founders Edition was just louder in general. So it's quite difficult for me to compare it, but it's 
it's quite okay, I would say, on a moderate level when it comes to coil wind, so that's okay. And it's definitely less than on my 5090 Founders Edition. But I can tell you, tweaking the fan on this, on this card made a huge difference. In this overview, you can see the 5080 Founders Edition with 47.2 decibels under load. If you look at the 5080 Astral in the P mode, performance mode, 53.1 decibels. It's very loud, like very loud. In the Q mode, it goes down to 44.6 decibels, so it's almost half as loud because we're going almost 10 decibels lower and 10 decibels equals double the noise level. But if we tweak it manual in the Q mode, lower the fan speed of the center and the rear fan, it goes down to 40.7 decibels. That is a huge improvement. And in these moments, I'm asking myself, was this tested? And if yes, how was this tested? Because the Q mode should be like this. The card has a lot of capacity. It's capable of staying very cold with a very low fan speed because that's what we just did by lowering the fan speed on the center and the rear fan. And I mean, I'm fine having a P mode with high noise level and high performance as long as this is not a stock condition. This should be the stock condition because 50 megahertz difference, it's not a lot, but with the capacity of the cooler, you can have this kind of performance with almost no, no noise level. But yeah, this definitely should be fixed. This should be changed. And this is the load scenario with my fan curve. This is not the ASUS stock condition, but that's what I would like to see, to be honest. We have about 70 degrees Celsius on the GPU core, which is about the same as the NVIDIA Founders Edition. At the same time, the memory is a lot colder, maybe 10 to 15 degrees Celsius colder. And you can already see it on the right. 1100 RPM, the card is significantly more quiet than the Founders Edition. So fan speed one is 1150 RPM, that is the left and the right fan. And if we check fan speed two, that is the center fan and the rear fan, they're running at 600 RPM. And then again on the right, the 12 volt high power sensing per pin sensing, just an amazing feature under load, we see between five and like six amps, which is like normal. And I think only if you would see maybe, let's say pin one is at two amps and pin six at 12 amps, then you should definitely check something. I now want to proceed opening the card, check out PCB and cooler. And my plan is also to somehow disable the rear fan. Maybe we will have to cut the wire or something and just to figure out how the card would behave without this fan in stock operation, at least in the Q mode. From what I can see looking at the screws, opening the card should be ASUS typical. That means we have to open or remove the screws from the GPU, the visible ones here, also these that keep the back and the front side of the cooler together, and then also take off the screws on the IO shield. And then we should be able to take off the card. The back plate is typically still attached from the front side through the PCB. With the screws removed, it seems like I can already remove this shroud, but I first also have to unplug the fans. I think I just realized that the three fans for the front are going over this connector. This should be RGB and the connector on the right is probably for the rear fan, which means that we can just unplug this one and then put the card together, test again before I'm taking it apart and change the thermals, like thermal paste, thermal interface material. Yep, looks good. Works pretty well, card is running under load. Front fans in Q mode, everything on auto. Nothing changed except for the rear fan not spinning at all because it's not plugged in. So far, this looks really promising. We can directly see changes because the middle fan is now also spinning at a higher RPM versus our manual fan curve, but all the fans are spinning overall at a lower RPM. So only about 1,100 RPM, where previously I think we saw about 1,250 or something like that. GPU temperature, memory temperature about the same, power draw the same, and also the GPU clock should be roughly the same. Now the funny part is after measuring the noise level, which turned out to be only 38.5 decibels. That means that the best current scenario that we can do is not manual tuning, but it's just unplugging the fan, keeping everything else the same in Q mode, which is hilarious and sad at the same time. Also, if we look back into the chart, this makes the card extremely quiet, especially versus the P mode and also versus the Founders Edition. So there's a lot of potential in the card, but what the hell is uh, with the rear fan? Yeah, not sure. <laughs> Let's continue with opening the card. Second attempt and the fan shroud is already gone. Also, if we look from the side onto the heatsink, you can also see that the fins, they have a different height, at least 
from the top direction. That is usually done because this helps the noise level. Finally, some graphics card newts. So here we see the GB203. Well, not yet, I still have to clean it. I also removed the thermal pads that were still stuck to the memory and put it back on the heatsink. On the heatsink, we can also see that Asus used something that's not a normal thermal paste, but more like a phase change thermal pad. And also the heatsink, you can see a vapor chamber and a lot of heat pipes exiting to the left and the right. And these portions make contact with the MOSFETs. And yeah, cooling wise, this is pretty nice, unlike this guy. But now cleaning the GPU. And here we have the GB203 400, as you can find it on any other RTX 5080. And I also measured it, it is about 25 times 16 millimeters in size. In general, the RTX 5080 Astral is an amazing card regarding the features, such as the 12 volt high power per pin sensing, and also the temperature reading features, such as memory and everything that you can see in GPU tweak. What I really can't understand is the thing with the rear fan. It is incredibly loud, especially in the P mode, it's unusable. In the Q mode, it's a good card, but the fan is still too loud. We see more than five decibels difference just unplugging the fan. I mean, that can't be serious, right? And I'm pretty sure, I mean, I already forwarded this feedback to ASUS and it's currently a little bit complicated because of Chinese New Year and a lot of people in charge not being in the office in Taiwan, which I can obviously understand, but it's also an unfortunate timing. But I hope that they will change it in a BIOS update, which should be no problem. And I hope they will fix it. I mean, 5080 in general is not as exciting, but I think the card should be similar to the 5090 in terms of design. I'm also still waiting for a 5090 Astral. Once I have it, we will definitely review it and check. Maybe at that time they will have fixed the rear fan issue because otherwise Asus, what the hell? Yeah, okay. So much about this video. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye-bye.